In this video, I'm going to be taking a look at Codex, which is a new lightweight coding agent that runs in the terminal. This new CLI tool is arguably in response to Anthropic Code, which is another CLI from the team over at Anthropic. What you'll be able to do is within the root of your repository or directory, wherever your code is, you'll be able to run this Codex command after it's all installed and you'll be able to make edits or net new changes to whatever you'd like. This is yet another option out there in terms of the agentic AI coding space. But the other thing to note with Codex is if it sounds familiar, that's because it is. This was originally released as a product in 2021. This is pre ChatGPT and OpenAI Codex originally was an AI system that translate natural language to codes. This isn't a new model. What this leverages under the hood are models like O3 or O4 mini. You'll be able to select the model that you wanna use just from the terminal. So in this video, I wanted to do a really quick demonstration on how it works and how you could potentially leverage it. But to get started, it is really straightforward. You can go and grab the npm installation command and you can paste it within your terminal. Now this does assume that you do at least have Node.js installed. And then once it's installed, you can go ahead and run the codex command to get started. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to quickly create a new Next.js application just to demonstrate this. Well, now that I have a project within the root of my directory, what you'll have to do is head on over to OpenAI and get an API key. And then once you have your API key, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna OpenAI underscore API key, and then we'll paste in our key and submit it. Now, once we have that, we can go ahead and run Codex. And what you'll see within here is we're gonna have the default model be O4 mini. You do have the option to also pass in some flags. So you can pass in the flag to specify a different model. If you wanna use the O3 model, you can do that. Alternatively, you can pass in some flags for whether you want to approve each change or not. These are just the default settings. And then once you're within here, you can go ahead and ask for your changes. But I just wanna quickly show you if you do want to swap out approval modes, there are a couple different ways. So I can go and pass in the flag for approval mode and specify it to be full auto. And then I can put in the argument for what I want the change to be. So I can say something like, I want to change the homepage to read developers digest. And then from there, what it will do is it will just kick off that change. And instead of asking me for every change, it's going to go and it's just going to make those updates. Obviously, if you're running it with this full auto mode, just make sure that you have committed changes, ideally, or it's within an application that's just a toy app and isn't a high stakes application. You wouldn't want it to do something you don't want it to do. As we see here, what it will do is it will go through and it will think through the different steps. And the way that this is set up is there's the core model but what these models in particular O4 mini as well as O3 are really good at is tool usage. Because within the context of coding, you're gonna to have to read files, write files. There's a number of different steps that occur to have an effective agentic coding system. And the other nice thing with this is you do have a config file that you can edit. If you do want some default configuration, there is a codex config that you can use. If you put in a .config folder, within that folder, you can put in a config.yaml, specify things like the model. And additionally, you can add in an instructions MD, which will act similar to something like cursor rules, if you're familiar with that. Now that I see that we have the header and it ran through full auto mode, I'll go ahead and I'll make a new tab here. Now I'm within a new tab, I'm gonna go ahead and start our development server. So I'll just bun dev and then I'll open it up here. Within here, I have some clarifying questions. Even if you do run it within auto mode, obviously there will be some interventions where you do have that human in the loop where it does need your feedback. What I'll do within here is I'll say, I want this globally on every page and add in a few placeholder links. Now, one thing that I have noticed with this is it definitely is in terms of the feedback that it gives back to you, not as snappy as something like Windsurf or Cursor, because what it will do for the loading state is instead of streaming things out on screen or having the different pieces show within the UI like you'd have within Cursor or Windsurf, what you'll have is a largely, and for some periods of time, just this thinking, and then it will snap in, in sometimes a large chunk of codes. So now we see it's added the global header to the root of the layout, complete with a developer's digest title and three placeholder links. It will show up on every page above your existing content. Let me know if you want to tweak it. And now I'll just open a new tab and I'll start our development server and just take a look at the change. Here is our website. Here's the Next.js boilerplate. And we have our header here. We have the links one, two, and three. Now we also have this issue within here. What I can do is I'll just go over here and I'll say, I got the following error. And let's see if it can go and correct that. Now, one thing to note with this that a lot of people will probably be wondering is whether this is supported on Windows. It's not directly supported. It will require the Windows 
subsystem for Linux. So Codex has specifically been tested on Mac OS as well as Linux with a version of Node 22 or higher at time of recording. Now I see after passing in the error, I now have this result here. Now I'm just gonna pass it in and ask it a handful of questions. I'm gonna say I want to create a beautiful SaaS landing page for a brand developer's digest. We'll go ahead and I'll send that in and we can see how well O4 Mini performs in terms of the front end coding capabilities. Here is the first iteration of what we asked for. It's a relatively simple design. There's obviously some potential accessibility issues. Now I'm gonna say, I don't quite like the header. Let's have the text all be white. And then let's have the background be a dark purple as well as black. One thing that I did notice is in terms of some people's comparison for Codex with O4 Mini compared to Claude Code, is for some tasks, some people didn't actually get the best results from Codex. So they mentioned that Claude Code did particularly well on this task for writing documentation of a tricky area of a medium sized code base, whereas Codex didn't do well at all. But the one notable thing with this, where it is different, is Codex is open source. That's gonna be something, hopefully that we'll see it improve quite a bit over the coming weeks and months. Since this is an official OpenAI release, the hope is that we'll quickly see this improve over the coming weeks and months. Now I see within our navigation, at least we have that purple and black, but I'm still not a huge fan of that hero area. So I'm gonna say I want the hero area more to match the overall theme of the nav bar. So I'll go ahead and I'll send that in. Just an interesting anecdote with this is where I think tools like this are interesting is I think as coding over time potentially becomes more of a natural language process, it's gonna be interesting to see how much of the real estate of the different screens that we use are occupied by tools like this, where we just more or less have a natural language interface where we're just simply directing what we want the code to do. It's gonna be interesting to see how well we can rely on just a natural language system to build out these applications. Now, obviously when it's a low stakes application like this, it's a little bit easier, but it's gonna be interesting to see over time how trustworthy these types of agentic tools are, especially for some more higher stakes applications. And now within here, I'm gonna say, I want to build out a rich, beautiful footer and I'll send that in. And right off the bat, my first impressions with O4 Mini is it definitely does perform quite well in terms of front end coding. While the first iteration, it didn't spit out something that looked quite great. It does seem to be like the type of model that with enough direction, it will give you something that is pretty feasible and does look quite reasonable. Here we see our navigation. And then from here, I'm gonna say, I wanna create the game of Tetris on a new page. Let's have link one, two, and three, and then Tetris. And I want Tetris to be more or less full screen. And I want the background and overall theme to be this purple and black that we have on the screen. So now in terms of usage, since this is built through the API and you are likely gonna be using a model like O4 Mini or O3, depending on how you use this, the pricing will vary a little bit. Say for instance, if you are gonna be using O4 Mini like the default is, the nice thing with O4 Mini is you do have the advantage of cached inputs. So for things that you have sent in before, you will be able to benefit from that lower cached input cost. That's just one thing to consider, especially if you're gonna be hammering on this model. Now, one thing that I will note is if you are using Cursor or Windsurf is right now for this week, they do have the ability for you to use O4 Mini for free. You can try those out both within Cursor as well as Windsurf and be able to try out those agentic features within their platform without having to pay. Now, here we go. We have this really simple Tetris game, but all in all, obviously the UI is relatively rudimentary. You can definitely tell it was built by an LLM. In just a number of prompts with some really light guidance, we were able to get something of a working application here. Overall, that's pretty much it for this video. I encourage you to check out the repo, try out Codex. Let me know what you think of it. How does it compare to things like Claude Code? Will you be using this over something like Cursor or Windsurf or one of these other agentic IDEs? Otherwise, that's pretty much it for this video. If you found this video useful, please comment, share, and subscribe. Otherwise, until the next one.